yet trying to get uh, gay content produced, producers will still say, well, it's not popular content. You know, um, there's not an audience for it. Well, I think there's always an audience for, for it. Yes, I actually sir. have a comment. Um, yeah. I've noticed that a lot of like male celebrities that have come out of the closet, um, they are not seen like Neil Patrick Harris for one, like you never saw him after Comment Your Mother and yeah. Matt Bowler from Magic yeah. Money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean you would, you would never have guessed he was gay. Right? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and that's I, I think that there was that's why there was a lot of uproar when uh, you know Matt Damon had come out uh, just a year back saying you know, I think actors who are, are, are gay should keep it to themselves. I want to ask you a question. Uh, I always get asked a question, which is, you know, I'm X age, and I have X job, and I have X amount of kids, but I've always wanted to be an actor. I've always wanted to act. Is it too late? And I always say to people, the answer is no. Because you don't have to all of a sudden dump everything you do in life and dedicate yourself like you're 15 or 20 and just move to New York. Absolutely. You can start joining a theater company, you can go and find an acting class, or you can get a group of friends together, get a play, and just put on your own play. And then they'll ask, you know, what's the number one acting tip or advice you give me? And, and my, mine is always, you just have to start training the brain to learn dialogue and release it. Like, everyone in this room can talk. Everyone in this room can walk. So, it's, it makes no sense why all of a sudden, if you're acting, you can't walk and talk. Most people can't walk and talk when they, when they start out, because they're so conscious about a, being looked at, and B, having to make sure they think they have to get all the words right. And the words really don't mean anything at the end of the day. So I tell people, get a magazine, get a book, get a newspaper, whatever you like. Just every day, take a paragraph. Don't try and learn the words, I woke up today and had my coffee. Just go, okay, what did I do? I woke up and had my coffee. Fine. Next thing, I went and got the newspaper. Okay, so I woke up, got my coffee, I had a newspaper. So it's just train the brain. What's, what's your... Uh, with your school and stuff, what's your, what's your take on A, the best way to start acting, and B, the best advice you can give someone to like train the mechanism and stuff to come out? Yeah, in all honesty, uh, some of the most, uh, our studio has, has, has defined a reputation, uh, unparalleled to be quite honest in this country, of uh, discovering, building, and launching international profiles. Um, whether, uh, ironically, Miley Cyrus started at my studio, and I worked with her on the Hannah Montana content. Uh, Nina Dobrev, who's a series regular on Vampire Diaries, I found her, built her, launched her. Um, we've got actors in, uh, all across the country, uh, throughout Canada and the U.S., uh, that have had a profound impact on our community. Um, Jack McKinnis Wood, Brittany Allen, who won an Emmy for All My Children, uh, who I worked with on the set of on All My Children. Um, as a matter of fact, Adam and I worked together on his very first picture of Tom Brock. 14 years old, 13 years old. So I worked in a screen test advisory capacity during the casting process and his pre production and his concept stuff as well. And I mean, his career has been absolutely extraordinary since. Um, you know, um, ironically, some of the most compelling performances that I have seen have come from <laughs> actors uh, with the least amount of experience uh, when it comes to the world of film and television. Uh, I have worked with a lot of actors making a transition from stage to screen, a lot of Broadway actors from the, the tra making a transition from stage to screen, um, and they can be the most challenging actors to work with in this particular medium, because it comes down to a very simple idea. What is more difficult to do, to make up your mind or to change your mind? Obviously more difficult to change your mind because you have to let go what you previously held to be truth and entertain a new idea. Um, so, you know, we have had uh, wonderful success at finding people. I do believe that there are six very specific ingredients in being a working actor. Um, and if you have those six and you are committed to yourself and the process, that everything and anything is attainable. My God, I would never be sitting at this table today had I listened to the advice and direction of everyone else in my life that were considered professionals when I made a decision to enter into the industry. I went to school to be a lawyer, uh, not even entertainment law, but environmental law, and found myself in this world. When I made a decision to get into acting, everybody in the world told me that I would never work. Uh, Starting in my late 20s, people said, you know, actors that are within your demographic have resumes that are far more substantial uh, than what you got. You will never work. I disagreed with that idea. I thought that there was always room for people that were exceptional um, in the businesses that they wanted to you know, pursue. Uh, I had that belief and confidence in what I knew and understood about myself and uh, felt that I, I needed to give it the, the
commitment to see me through. Um, I did. What wasn't supposed to happen for me, uh, <laughs> according to everyone else in the world, was after two years of working regularly in stage, which is where I built my career from Shaw Festival to Main State Second City, doing shows all across uh, uh, Ontario and Canada in the world of stage. What wasn't supposed to happen after doing that for two years was to star on Broadway, which I ended up doing in the musical Rent for two years, and uh, had a hit show on Showtime for five years. Those two things would never have happened according to the people that I was seeking advice from when I began my pursuit. So part of the reason why I had built my school today, um, it has been in operation for now 18 years. We've had over 14,000 actors go through the school. We have a combined faculty and staff of 86. Um, part of the reason, uh, the roots of the development of our programs and the facilitation of opportunities was to do for people what I believed, uh, uh, A, I could do, but B, uh, for, for folks that had that question, that desire to pursue, and may never have done so otherwise, uh, to be able to have a vehicle for people to uh, explore their creative side, um, to uh, explore craft, to define a method of approach to their work, uh, and to uh, have things realized that were dreams. Uh, I felt it was a necessary thing for me to do, based on my experience, and not all actors, who, uh, or I should say not all people, will be willing to um, <coughs> go against the grain and do something that all of the professionals uh, say is not possible and actually see something realized. I think we should have a round of applause. For that. Yes, absolutely. Questions or not? Anybody have a question? I do. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty uh, good. Franco. <laughs> Daniel, I just want to say on behalf of everyone in this room and all the fans of Line Art, congratulations on 10 wonderful years on the show. And I think we're going to go back to the and we are back together. Now, I have a question for you. Okay, I, if you remember, I saw it maybe a month or two ago. They, Victor was arrested for the Marco and Asali uh, conspiracy. Um, and they had an alternate okay. universe in which Nick and Lily were together. Oh, that, okay, so, so, my question to you is... If I wasn't with Lily, who would I be with? Uh, well, sort of. Like, okay. would you retaliate with Sharon? <laughs> or, like, is there a co-star that you haven't worked with yet that you'd like to work with? Um... You know what? Uh, I was meant to be with Phyllis before they put me with Lily. Uh, really? Yeah, back when. I think. Daniel's mother? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she's a cougar. Uh, so I had a, I had one scene with her because back in this back when I started on the show, they they do a lot of like chemistry sort of scenes. Yeah. They kind of still do it now, but generally now they've got. The way the current regime is, they've got six months of story laid up. So you may come and do a scene with someone who you haven't done a scene with, and it might be fantastic. And I question whether they'll start to change story. But back when I was doing, when I started, they'd have a scene with whoever it is, me and Phyllis. Was it Phyllis with Nick then? Yeah. Yeah. But it was after, I think, after she just found out that Nick cheated on her or something, or, and I just broke up with Amber. And, um, I ended up having a scene with her, and it, it was a good scene, and they liked it, but then I think I had a scene with, with Crystal, yeah. and they liked that more. Yes. So they said, let's let's go in that direction. But nowadays, I think what you'll see is actors get put in scenes together that have zero chemistry, mm -hmm. and they'll try to make a relationship out of it. And they'll drive it down the, the oh, what's that? They'll, they'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it, but eventually it'll fall apart. Which I think leaves an audience unsatisfied because the audience goes, "Well, why was I watching that for so long when it wasn't going to go anywhere?" Yeah. So, uh, in order to answer your question, uh, I thought Stafford the only reason because I thought she was a fantastic actress, yeah. Michelle Stafford. Yeah. She's the sort of girl that you do a scene with, and she's like, "That's why she, I think Phyllis and, and Nick work so well because Phyllis did." But I was such a Nick and Sharon fan. She yeah, broke up Nick and Sharon. I missed that because I got <laughs> that, so I never missed <laughs> it. 
you know, Michelle would do all the heavy lifting in the scene. You know, whatever it was, it doesn't matter what it was, she'd do all the heavy lifting. So from that point of view, it's kind of fun because you know that she's going to bring the brain. Um, so I'd, I'd probably say Michelle, yeah. who's not there anymore. What about Gina? Oh, Gina, you know what? Um, when well, she's with Billy, or no, oh, she's yeah. married to Jack, but she's yeah, no, something on with Billy. Yeah. Right, Jack and Billy. Yeah. Um, how do I feel? Uh, I haven't watched, to be honest with you, I haven't watched enough of the show as of late to see a lot of the new characters, what they're doing. Um, uh, I haven't really watched the new Billy that much because I, I've seen four Billys come and go. You know, well, they're so fantastic with Billy Miller. Yeah, no, Billy Miller was great. I mean, yeah. Billy Miller was just. I mean, it's forever that'll be his role. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because when he came on the show, he was meant to be my brother. Yeah, yeah. And we were brothers, and then Jeannie Cooper went to Maria Bell, the head writer at the time, yeah. and said, wouldn't it be cool if Kane was an imposter? Oh. I was like, to this day, I never said to Jeannie, so it was you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I look back in hindsight, I think it gave me a better story. You know, it allowed a lot of things to take place and play out. So, uh... I like working with everybody. I really don't care. As long as I can act. Yeah. You know, I've worked with a couple of people on the show that may have come and may have gone. And, you know, like think of that when you when you're talking really? to them, literally, there's nobody home. And I did have actually gone. The ones I'm thinking about are no longer on the show. Uh, and literally, you'll talk to them. It's like you're looking at them, and <clears throat> all they're doing is waiting for you to stop speaking. And and you'll know this. Is like people say, "What's my cue line?" I'm like, don't worry about the cue line, just listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, and it goes back to what we're talking about, like acting schools and things. I went to a very classically trained acting school, which was based on this Russian method, method of Stanislavski. And they do like uh, sense memory, emotional recall, mm -hmm. just likes, all these different things. Like, you know, if I've got to have a scene where I've got to break up with my girlfriend, and, or she, I found out my, like, my mother died, or whatever it is, or like, remember when you were six and like, you know, Spot ran across the street and you saw Spot get run over by the steamroller. You know, and how you felt, like bring that back. I'm like, no, because I, I tried that, but it, I always felt so convoluted because you're trying to be in the present, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about something else. And the bottom line is, I think if you as a human being are sensitive enough, and then, and we're together, and you say, I don't love you anymore, I mean, it should make you feel something. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of just being the moment and listening. Yeah. I don't know if we got that, but that's what it's further from that point of view. But uh, yeah, I'd probably say, Stafford, or whatever. Yeah. How was it like with you and Tracy working together? I like Tracy. We're good friends. Um, my problem with Tra not Tracy with working together in that situation is I'm I'm too I'm too logical. I'm not a logical male. That's probably my, my downfall in life. Is if it does make sense to me, you know, I, I can't fit a square peg in a round hole. I just say I'd rather I'd rather cut the peg into a round peg, or just say <laughs> or cut the, the hole into a square hole. I mean, I, I refuse to try and do it. Cause it makes no sense. And it made no sense to me whatsoever. The, the yeah. logic behind it. I mean, I, I, went, I agree. <laughs> I went and I actually pitched to the, to the writers, you know, before they did that. I said, look, if you're going to break up Kane and Lily, which I, I sense is in the air, I said, let's let's really make a real story out of it. You know, yeah. a man and a woman have been together like eight years, have surrogated a baby, yeah. she, she went through cancer, we can't have any more children, yeah. you know, and we're going to break up. <laughs> What's the emotional fallout of that? What happens to the family? What happens to the children? I said, you can a really good, like, just down in the dirt, like, real, like, heartbreaking story. Yeah. But they had a different vision for it, and they decided yeah. to do this thing with the stuff with Lauren. So, to me, 